sets could be written or represented in in different ways. So these are linear inequalities, meaning we have the less than or greater than sign. So set notation is what we're, what we're used to writing. X is less than seven, X is greater than equal to negative four, Y is greater than 10, things like that. But we have greater than or less than, and then there's a variable. And then these red, red squiggly marks are what we call squiggly brackets. So these brackets represent a set, right? So this is a set, a set, a set. And we write it as the set of Y such that Y is greater than 10. So I was talking about a set. I would say, oh, okay, this is a set here and it has elements of, of Y's in it, right? So there's a bunch of Y's in here and the Y's represent any number that is bigger than 10. So number 12, 11, 12, 13, 14, yada, yada. So the set of Y such that Y is greater than 10. That's how you read it. And then you could graph it. So when you graph something, you could represent, you could always represent these inequalities as a graph. So when you graph it, um, for example, I'm gonna just take a look at this. If I'm gonna graph this, y is greater than 10, I would have, so let's say, bring this all the way here. So here's a number 10. Y is greater than 10, I would have open circle on 10 because there's no equal sign and greater than means it goes to the right. So here I just drew a picture of it. And interval notation is another way of representing the same information. An interval notation is a window that describes the graph. So here is the graph. So I, I put a box around it just to say, okay, that's my window. So the window is gonna be written in a way where you have the left end point, comma, the right end point of your solution. So here, when I look at my solution or my graph, the, what's the farthest left this graph will ever go? Well, the farthest left or the left end point is the number 10. So I write 10, comma, and here, what's the farthest right it'll ever go? Notice that this is an arrow to the right. So if you have an arrow to the right, it goes towards infinity. So infinity looks like an eight that's lying down, that's sleeping, right? So infinity, if you think of the infinity car, it looks that way. So 10 is the left side of this graph, and the right side of the graph is infinity. So not only now do you have the left endpoint and the right endpoint, you need to write down, indicate whether it includes the endpoints or not. So since 10 is an open circle, in other words, it's not equal to 10, it's just an open circle, it's every number bigger than 10, not 10 itself. So you're gonna do an open bracket. This is called an open bracket, and that's because you put an open bracket because since 10 is not included. So it's an open circle, there's a strictly greater than, there's no equal to, so therefore you do an open bracket. Infinity, infinity always has, an infinity always has open bracket. So whenever you have an infinity or a negative infinity, so negative infinity is on this side, if you have a negative infinity in your interval, you always put an open bracket. Now, what if I had said it's, um, what if I said, okay, let's go ahead and write this one in interval notation. If I wanted to write this in interval notation, first I'm gonna graph it just so I could visually see it. I have negative four and it says X is greater than or equal to negative four. So I'm gonna do a solid circle in negative four because it's greater than or equal to, and I'm gonna point to the right because those are the numbers that are bigger than negative four. So if I wanted to do a write this in interval notation, I would write the left-hand endpoint, which is negative four, and the right-hand endpoint, which is infinity. And then I ask myself, do I have open or closed brackets? So infinity always has an open bracket, or in other words, a parenthesis, an open bracket. Negative four, notice that this has a solid circle or solid dot. That means it includes negative four because it's greater than or equal to. So when you have something that includes the endpoint, you make a closed bracket that looks like this. So this is a closed bracket, and we do a closed bracket since negative four is included. Since there's a closed circle 
or close dot and negative four since it's greater than or equal to. So that's a background of set theory and how you could write it. You could write it as a set notation, you could graph it, or you could write it as interval notation.